the con session today is regarding uh, the data interpretation. Okay. So in, in this data interpretation, the topics which are, which consist here, I mean, the uh, questions will be asked from the tables, like one table will be given, followed by some questions will be asked regarding uh, the data, whatever is represented in the table, and bar graphs, line graphs, and mixed figures, mixed graphs. Okay, uh, so uh, first of all, let us understand what type of questions exactly will be asking so questions as i told you it will be connected with the tables graphs okay uh, line graphs bar charts anything else but the type of question depends on most probably the question will be from percentages percentage concept fractions concept are ratio concepts so these concepts again will be repeated in arithmetic module so as of now it's very essential to know some uh, important basic stuff regarding these percentages fractions and ratios <clears throat> so i would like to explain you some basics uh, it will be helpful for you to solve the questions throughout the session okay so first thing percentage so percentage let us say it is 25 percent so percentage can be converted into fraction and uh, further it can be converted into decimal if i talk about the 25 percent what will be the fraction of this 25 percent the fraction of 25 percent will be 25 100 okay if i want to convert it into the decimal it will be 0 0.25 it's always uh, very essential to know this conversions percentage converted to fraction and fraction converted to a decimal value for, uh, uh, for example, let us say it's 12.5% given. What will be the decimal value of this percentage? So 12.5% is given. So convert this percentage to decimal. How to convert this percentage value to decimal? A simple thing here to convert the percentage to decimal. So you have to just whatever the decimal point here, you have to move the decimal points to two places to left, 0. Point Two five, uh, 0 0.125 it will be 0 0.125 i'm just changing the value here converting the decimal point two places to left to side this time these tricks are very important so 0.125 if any uh, percentage is given like 18.9 percent is what in decimal so 18.9% is what in decimal? What we have to do simply move the decimal point to two places to left 0 0.189. Okay. If some uh, decimal value is being given and you need to change it for percentage, for example, 0 0.007 is a decimal value given. How to change this decimal value to percentage? 0 0.007 is a decimal value given and we need to change it into the percentage. Anybody in the class can answer in chat box. You can reply in the chat. Yeah, so here we are simply moving, uh, if we want to find out the percentage, opposite to the above one, move the decimal point two places to right. Previously, we have moved the decimal point two places to left, right? Now move the decimal point two places to right, it will be 0.7%. So this is the very important stuff you should know, the basic stuff. Changing the decimal values into percentage and changing the percentage to decimals. Okay, next next thing here so uh, whenever the percentage is been to be calculated the formula what we will use to calculate the percentage is nothing but value by total value into 100 value by total value into 100 let's discuss a simple question uh, regarding to this uh, formula so let us say there are 200 students in a class i'm just saying that there are 200 students in a class out of them 90 are girls 90 students are girls then find the percentage of girls in the class. What will be the percentage of girls in the class? Percentage of girls in the class. I repeat once again. And just clean it up first. 
my question here is let us say there are 200 students are there in a class and 90 students are girls among that 200 what will be the percentage of girls so basic stuff you should not forget value by total value into 100 value by total value total value is 200 total number of students is 200 into 100 it gives you the percentage value for the uh, question whatever it has been asked percentage of girls here yeah. okay by calculating this you'll be getting that uh, next thing is uh, let us say a uh, third concept is percentage change concept percentage change sometimes let us say there is a question saying in 2005 the sales was uh, something i uh, say uh, not sales let us say an account so there was an account it was increased by 25000 uh, there was an account which consists of 25000 and uh, uh, in 2006 year it increased to 25005 dollars in 2005 it was 25000 dollars and in 2006 it increased to 25005 dollars what is the percentage change what what will be the change in the percentage according to this data i repeat the question once again in 2005 the sales or the account consists of 25000 dollars in 2006 it increased to 25005 dollars now the question here is asking about what will be the percentage change any any answers you have you can just put it in the chat yeah yes percentage change i'm not i'm asking about the percentage change so to find out the percentage change we have to take the that is we have to take the change that is difference divided by initial value into 100 never forget this formula it's very important change by initial value into 100 how much the change is here how much the uh, account is being changed from one year to another what was it initially it was 25000 so initial value will be 25000 into 100 by calculating this value will get uh, the answer for this what percentage it has been changed so it will be approximately i think 0.02% 0 0.02% 0 0 any of the students may know may not know but it's very important to uh, put all these formulas handy right so the first thing uh, what i have discussed is to change the decimals to percentages and percentages to decimals and second thing is the formula of uh, value into 100 and the third thing will be regarding the percentage change so percentage change value is nothing but difference by initial value into 100 or change by initial value into 100 whatever it may be we will consider the same thing so change by initial value into 100 gives you the value of percentage change I'll just clean this so that I can explain another one. Right. Is percentage increase or percentage decrease? Okay. Percentage increase or percentage decrease? Whenever the percentage is increasing or whenever the percentage is decreasing, how to deal with that? For example, let us say a person's salary was decreased by 12%. Person salary was decreased by 12% to $17,600. Person salary decreased by 12% to $17,600. What was his salary? before decrease is what i repeat the question once again a person's salary decreased by 12 percent to seventeen thousand six hundred dollars what was his salary before decrease any answers for this question you can just put it in the chat box yeah correct
Yes. Please answer for this one right now here. Uh, my question here is a person's salary is decreased by 12% to 17,600 dollars. What was the salary before decrease? Any answer? You can put it in the chat. Waiting for your answers. Okay. Correct. So whenever the salary is decreasing, okay, whenever the salary is decreasing here, we have to consider, uh, first of all, let us say that salary is not given. Salary is not given here, but the value after decrease, it has been given. So let us consider X. X is the salary and it has been decreased to 12% decrease. So 12% decrease, we will decrease that 12 from 100. That will be 88 by 100, not 12 by 100. Okay. Just a small change in your answer. 88 by 100 is equals to the salary at present. That is 17,600. So whatever the value it has been decreasing, we have to decrease the numerator for that uh, uh, value. So uh, let us consider it is 100. So decreasing it for if it is increased, we have to add. If it is decreased, we have to deduct. Okay, by calculating the value for this, uh, approximately it will be like uh, 88 x is equals to 17600 and 00 again. Then x value will be something. And directly I can write it uh, instead of doing this. Step, again, a simple thing. I can write eight for, uh, 88 by 100 as x into, wait a minute. So 88 by 100 also I can write it as x into it will be easy for calculation and time will be saved a lot. So x will be directly 17,600 divided by 0 0.8. So if you calculate this value, it will be 0 here and 0 here, something around 20,000. The salary will be 20,000. Okay. And the same concept if it is increased, we will uh, increase the above one. If it is decreased, we will decrease the uh, numerator increase then increase the numerator decrease then decrease the numerator okay next so in a percentage increase and decrease was another concept now this so all these concepts are very important for you to understand to go through the data interpretation questions Here I have given you the person salary in data interpretation. It may be anything represented on the graph. It may be sales. It may be a grade pay or it may be a grade scores. Anything it may be. Right. Uh, so next point here, successive increase. Successive. What does it mean by successive? Successive is nothing but continuous. Continuous increase or continuous decrease. Let us say a person's salary is 80,000. Okay. A person's salary is 80,000 and it has been increased. Uh, first, um, I'll just write it here. First, first step, it is decreasing. First year, it is decreasing to 20%. Uh, and then it is increasing to 5%. And then it is increased by 30% again. decreased 20 percent in second year increased 50 percent in third year again increased 30 percent so this was the basic thing you should know here whenever it is successive uh, increase or decrease we will directly make a step here that is 80,000 was the salary right so what was the increase at the at the first year uh, I mean the first year it was decreased so decreased by 20 percent then 80 by 100 again increased by 5 percent 105 by 100 Again, increased by 30 per Calculating the value for this. Uh, here, my question is, what is the salary at present? What is the present salary? And what is the present salary uh, will be the question. Anybody who ever get the answer for this can put it in the chat box. Seven one two. So actually, for the previous one, I think. Yeah. What's the answer for this? So you can make us another step here directly into zero point eight into point zero five into point one point three. 
So multiplying these values directly, you can get the answer. Okay. Okay. Once you finish, you can update the thing in the chat. So these are the basic stuff regarding the percentages. What you should do. Fractions finish, percentages finish, and next concept will be the ratios. The many questions, many types of questions here in this data interpretation will also be getting from the concept of ratios. So ratios is a very easy stuff. Okay, a fraction can be written in the in the in a ratio. A simple question for you guys. So let us say there are twenty girls. And 30 boys in a class. What is the ratio of girls and boys? What is the ratio of girls and boys? So if I take the ratio of girls and boys, it will be obviously two is to three, right? So the ratio will be two is to three. Sometimes in the question, directly the ratio of uh, girls is to boys is given as two is to three. What will be the value of girls? How many girls will be there? So, what will be the value of girls if some other data number of students is given? Like, for example, let us say number of students are two hundred. So, there are total two hundred students in a class. Girls and boys uh, ratio is two is to three. Then, what? Uh, how many girls are there in the class? That is my question. How many girls are there in the class? The same thing what we have done for the um uh, percentage one value by total value here also we are going to follow the same thing. so how much fraction it has been per girls part girls uh, belongs to 2 by 5 total value is 5 2 by 5 into 200 gives you the number of girls if at all if it is asking for boys so it will be 3 by 5 into 200 gives you the number of boys so this is the basic stuff that you all know Okay, but don't assume. Uh, so many of the students do one silly mistake. So whenever girls is to boys is given as two is to three, they will assume that the value of G is two. But value of G is not two. Value of G is something which is multiplied to two, right? Something which is multiplied to. As 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 per the example what we have discussed here, uh, so something that is two into ten. So ten which is common from both the parts that has been multiplied to this that gives you the value of g exactly so whenever uh, you are required to take the g value separately you should not take g as 2 you should take g as 2k 2x 2y whatever it may be but something constant should be uh, uh, multiplied to this value okay i hope uh, uh, the basics are done here everything is well and good now let's start with the questions data interpretation table so this table this data set here the set one this set is uh, belongs to all the questions right nearly there are five questions here on the screen for data set one so if you go through the data set two the data set two is the line graph and again followed by you have bar graph pie chart and everything in this uh, in this session today what we will we are going to discuss now first tables table graph so how the tables will be uh, look like so this is the question related to the tables what i recommend you is to take the screenshot of the first data because if i put the second question on the screen you cannot get the data again so better to take the screenshot if you have another device it's okay so better to take the screenshot of this uh, because this data is applicable for all the rest of the uh, five questions, uh, these questions are arranged in an order of difficulty. So if you see the question number one, two, three, four, and five, uh, it moves like easy, medium, and the difficulty levels are increasing. Okay. So try to give me the answer for the first one. Take a screenshot and put it with you. answer for the first one. I'm putting the question on the screen. See, data interpretation uh, is a concept like you have to analyze the data, concentrate from very small, small points, understand the data, and then you have to go. Whenever the table graph is given, uh, this is only small values given, uh, two rows and uh, um, uh, three rows and three columns. But uh, sometimes it will be very large table graph. So better to add the, uh, I mean, uh, values 
from here to here and here to here total values better to add the total values both vertically and horizontally so that it will be helpful throughout the uh, all five questions okay once you are done with this question put your answer in the chat box Yes, approximately what percent of the ninth grade girls at high school are enrolled in Spanish? So there are some students who are enrolled in Spanish and not enrolled in Spanish. And uh, the data is given for both the genders, boys and girls. If you total up these uh, values, it will be 5 and 2, 25. Total enrolled in Spanish, 25. Not enrolled, uh, it will be... So not enrolled one, the, st the students who are not enrolled, so it will be 5, uh, so 35. Okay, uh, now in this way, if you total up the values, 31 here, if you total up these values, 9 and 29 here. So basic stuff is ready with you. Now, uh, the question here is asking percentage of girls at the school who are enrolled. So girls are 13. Value by total value. Total how many students are there? Value by total value into 100. So value by total value into 100. So uh, total value 13 plus 16 are the girls. So 13 plus 16, 29. So I have not written it clearly, but uh, I think you can understand. 29 here. Okay, value by total value into 100 gives you the percentage of this. Quick answer in the chat box. Put the answer in options A, B, C, D, R, E. Yes, option C is correct answer. So it will be 45%. Forty five percent. What is the strategy we have used here? We have used here the formula of percentage formula. What was that value by total value into hundred? Okay, so answer is C. Next question. So you can see the question number two here. What fraction of the students? I told you uh, to take the screenshot of the data. Okay. What fraction of the students in ninth grade at school are boys who are enrolled in Spanish? So here the question is regarding fraction has been asked. Fractions, percentages, ratios are the mostly asked questions related to this uh, data interpretation. Approximately uh, two or three questions will be there in GRE. It's a time consuming concept. So you have to practice as many questions as you can then only you can do it in time yeah Permutations and combinations, I hope uh, that session will be tomorrow. What fraction of students in ninth grade? Uh, quick answer. We need to find out the fraction here. So this is the question. You want me to put the data on the screen? Put the data on the screen, Anush. See, uh, this is the data. Now, uh, what the question exactly asking about boys who are enrolled in Spanish? Fraction of boys enrolled in Spanish. So, fraction of boys enrolled in Spanish. Let me clean up all this stuff.
yeah what is the fraction of boys enrolled in spanish okay uh, then uh, total number of students including girls and boys what will be the total total number of students total number of the students if you see uh, the complete thing it will be 60 now among this total number of students how many uh, boys enrolled in spanish so how many boys enrolled in spanish boys enrolled in spanish is 12 so 12 boys are enrolled in spanish so uh, what what is exactly the question is to find out the fraction of boys who are uh, find the fraction of students in ninth grade at this uh, high school are boys who are enrolled in spanish okay a uh, total and a uh, number of boys so it will be fraction for boys and total so boys are 12 and fraction will be 60 uh, total will be 60 our fraction will be 12 by 60 12 by 60 so 12 ones 12 fives it's one by four did you get the answer atya i think i i think you have uh, done it wrong I, I i guess 12 by 31 yeah got it very good mm -hmm. right next Next question uh, is the question of ratios. You can see the question. What is the ratio of ninth grade girls not enrolled in Spanish to all ninth grade students at the school? The ratio of girls who are not enrolled, okay, so who are not enrolled to the total girls. If you are done with this question, then I'll just put the data on screen for your reference purpose. I'll clean up on the stuff. It's clear. So this is the data. Okay. Total number of I mean, the ratio has been asked here. So not enrolled. So not enrolled girls are 16. Not enrolled girls are 16. Okay. And the total number of students in the school are 60. 16 by 60 will be the fraction. If you <coughs> convert this fraction in the ratio, it will be 16 to 60. 16 is to 60, simplest form. Representing this in the simplest form, it will be 4 is to 4 is to 15 will be the simplest form for this. Okay. Right. 16, no? Uh, yeah, 4 is to 15. Correct. 4 is to 15. Option C will be the correct answer. Option C. Right. Next. Next question. So here, uh, X percent more, if X percent more ninth grade students at Millbrook High School are not enrolled in Spanish, then are enrolled than enrolled in Spanish, what is X? So read the question properly. If you miss even a single word also, you will not get the answer. As I told you, the difficulty level increases from one question to another question. Previous two questions were easier one, but here it is little difficult. X percent more, ninth X percent more. So I'll just put this here, this part on the screen, the data so that it will be useful. For me. Go through the question clearly. Okay. If, if it is good. Then I'll put the data on the screen. If X percent more, X percent more, okay? So there is some percentage which is not determined. It has been added. More in the sense we are adding. So it has been added uh, to what uh, the students are not enrolled in Spanish than are enrolled in Spanish. What is X? So the data is on the screen. If you are done with the answer, put it on the screen. Put it in the chat box. Yeah. So always it's better to take the screenshot with other device. It will be easy. Right. 
Waiting for your answer, guys. Once done, please put it in the chat box. Question number four. X percent more ninth grade students at the school are not enrolled in Spanish than are enrolled in Spanish. What is X? Any answers? Okay. Correct. It's 40. Okay. Let us see how it's 40. So first it is X percent added. So X by 100 of enrolled, right? So X by 100, X percent more are added who are uh, enrolled. Adding, adding wins, we have to add these enrolls. Then it will become the students who are not enrolled. So this is the way we have to understand the question. This is the simple equation gives you the solution for this question. Okay. So finding the value of uh, uh, the x value by putting the enrolled and not enrolled things in this question that gives you the answer here. Okay. So overall there is 12 plus 35. Uh, so 12 plus 13 is equals to 25 students who are enrolled total. So I'm just writing the data here. Total enrolled, total not enrolled will be uh, 35 students. 25 are enrolled, 35 are not enrolled. Okay. And now you just put the value of enroll and not enroll. 35 is not enrolled. X by 100 of 25 plus 20. Okay. Uh, so simply we can do this like uh, 35 is equals to X by 4. So I'm just calculating two ones, two fours plus 25. So by calculating the value of X here, <coughs> X by 4 is equals to 35 minus 25. Then X by 4 is equals to 10. Finally, the X value will be 10 into 4, 40. The answer for this will be D. Okay. Right. Still any uh, query, anything, you can always put it on the screen. Okay, so data interpretation is very uh, vast concept. You need to practice many questions. So because the table, whatever the tables concept is there, this is the last question here from the tables concept. Next, we will move to the line graph. Again, bar graph, pie chart. So uh, various set of data are being included here. Right, go through the question. This is a difficult question here. So please uh, try to answer it correctly. Yes, once you are done with the answer for this, put it on the chat box. It's a, a, a bit difficult, so I'll give you some time to answer this. Same strategy, read the question in bits and pieces. And write down the data, whatever the data uh, you have gone through, make a note of it. If two of the ninth grade boys at Millbrook High School were uh, who are not enrolled in Spanish decided to enroll in Spanish, so uh, not enrolled in Spanish or decided to enroll in enroll in Spanish. That means, so not this. Uh, yeah, I'll just. It's not. I'm not unable to copy it also. Okay. Enrolled in Spanish. Boys 12 and 13 girls. Okay, so <clears throat> if you see the question here, so overall, uh, the number of boys enrolled in Spanish will be 12.
Give me a minute. I'll just plug into my uh, battery. Give me a minute, please. One second, please. For the seven related, yes, going through the question here. Any answers? So, uh, someone have replied for this. I think Anish, okay, it's A. Let us check. Is it A? <coughs> So according to the data, if you see the uh, table very clearly, and if you are understanding the table, uh, so statement here says two of the ninth grade boys uh, were not enrolled in the Spanish, decided to enroll in the Spanish. That means not enrolled will decrease and enrolled will increase. Now here, if I uh, take the number of students or number of boys, the data here, Enrolled. So enrolled will be 12. Okay. Not enrolled. Not enrolled will be 19. Okay. And two boys um, uh, total. Uh, yeah, two boys are enrolling, right? Uh, so it will increase. So 12 plus 2. So number of boys enrolled will be 12 plus 2. So that will become 14. Okay, again, in the next statement, it says seven new boys enrolled in the ninth grade at the school, also in Spanish. So again, seven students increased, seven students enrolled, then the change of this will be 21. So overall, 21 students will be there, the total number of uh, enrolled in Spanish. So enrolled in Spanish, enrolled will be 21. What are these? Delta belongs to boys. Now talking about girls' data. So what is the data of girls? So is there any data given for the girls here? So decided girls. And then eight new girls. Eight new girls are there. So eight new girls. Uh, previously, the girls were 13. So if you add eight to that, 13 plus eight, it will become 21 again. So girls, the, the total enrollment of girls will be 21. Now, what will be the total, overall total of the girls? Overall total of the girls overall total girls total overall total of the girls will be 13 uh, overall total of the girls will be 21 here 21 plus 16 21 <clears throat> plus 16 if you put the data and the question parallelly then you can understand this one 21 plus 16 
So enrolled and not enrolled both. Okay. 21 plus 16, it will be uh, 37. 37. <laughs> and what will be the total for boys? So overall total for boys, total enrolled and not enrolled for boys will be 17. 21 plus 17 will be 38. Now we have to see what will be the total number of students uh, in the school. Total number of students in the school 37 plus 38. So total number of students includes boys and girls both. So 37 plus 38 will be the total number of students. That will be 75 will be the total number of students. Now go to the exactly what the question it has been asked. What percent of ninth grade students at the school would then be taking Spanish? Okay, what percent of the uh, students? Students includes both boys and girls. So what percent? 21 plus 21, right? 21 plus 21 uh, is girls 21 and boys is 21. So overall it is, I'll just write it here. So this will become our total, total students and enrolled students enrolled, total students enrolled is equals to 21 girls and 21 boys enrolled in Spanish is 21 plus 21. So that will be 42. Now what, what, what's the question here is we need to find out the value of percentage. What percentage it will be given. So simply 42 by 75 into 100, the percentage here. 42 by 75 into 100. Okay. Question looks a bit complicated while studying, but noting down the data is the strategy that you can follow. Uh, parallelly, if you put question and table, it will not be that much difficult. So as of now, uh, if you calculate this part, our, question, our, our answer for this question will be 56%. 56%. Yeah, it's E. Correct. No, no problems, Anish. Next. Next uh, graph is our line graph. Line graph, there are some points, very interesting points that you should understand and memorize, uh, remember throughout the uh, life also. It will be very helpful. So see here, whenever the line graph is there, which is plotted on the graphs, right? So we have to uh, recollect the concept of coordinate geometry. So what is the coordinate geometry slope concept? I hope you remember the coordinate geometry slope concept, right? So I have explained you by the mountain uh, example. So what is that? If it is moving, the line is moving from upward to uh, downwards to upward direction, it will be the slope for this will be positive. If the line is moving uh, in this way from uh, upward to downward direction, the slope of this will be negative. That means the values are decreasing. So here the values are decreasing. You just compare this with the graph. You can see here. So uh, let us see, there is a line which is going from here to here. What is that representing? That is representing uh, the values are increasing from year to year. I mean, month to month, right? The values are increasing from each and every month. That's the thing. Whenever the values are increasing, we have to uh, take it as a positive. Decline, decreasing, right? So you can see this uh, gray line, which is uh, going downward. So what does it, it is, it, it's a negative slope. Sometimes, even without calculations also, you can go through the graph once you know this concept. Okay? Whenever there is anything line parallel to x-axis, what will be the slope? Line parallel to x-axis, slope will be zero. Parallel to x-axis. And line parallel to y-axis, the slope will be zero. Okay? So, based on this concept, our next question will be there. Try to answer this question. I recommend you guys to take a screenshot because it will be very difficult to relate the question and the figure. There is no figure in the question uh, parallelly. So please take screenshot of this figure and try to solve the question. I'm putting the question on the screen. So it's uh, uh, multiple selection question, you need to select more than one month. Indicate two such months. That means you need to select two months. Right? Answers. 
if you have not taken the screenshot please let me know in the chat box so that am i audible yeah if there is any issue regarding my voice or anything else please let me know if i'm if i'm not audible uh, please send it in the chat box okay i am putting the question on the screen here relate the figure with the question yeah see electric energy cost increased most between which two consecutive months so if this is the question put the question in the mind and see the graph so if you see the graph there are two lines which is plotted on the same graph the thick line with a diamond points diamond shaped points is an average temperature and uh, the gray line with circles right with circle points here dots so it's an electric energy cost so it has uh, been also given that the temperature is measured in foreign heat and uh, this electric energy cost is measured in dollars right what's your answer <clears throat> see the question uh, electric energy cost increased most between which two consecutive months increased most most between which two continuous months so if you see the graph properly uh, what are the two years which are which is which have, it has been increased most july and august if you see this july and august the difference between the dots is more than comparing with the other dots which are uh, on increasing phase right so increasing in the sense the line which is going upward direction we have to see that line we should not bother about any points what are what are the points what are the values and all don't bother about this just to see how the stiffness of the line is moving if it is moving in this direction then it is a positive that means increasing so increasing then our concentration should be on this line and the second point here it is what are the two consecutive months it has been increased most so two consecutive months we can take may and june june and uh, uh, july also increasing july and august also increasing august and september also increasing but from all the three uh, all the values most it has been increased from july to august you can see this our answer here i hope you uh, you get that please show previous slide of percentage previous slide of percentage for the previous data set i didn't get you exactly what was that was that this one atia you want me to uh, put the <clears throat> which slide on the screen was that related to tables one or uh, yeah okay mm -hmm. right take the screenshot quickly i am moving for the next question so see the next question electric energy cost changed least between which two uh, consecutive months least change least so uh, graph is on the screen <coughs> change least between which two continuous months i repeat the question once again uh, the electric energy cost energy cost okay electric energy cost change released between which two consecutive months electric energy cost electric energy cost is the line which is 
represented with the gray line the question here is to find out which two months it has been changed least it is not uh, the question is not related to increase or decrease the question is related to change which two months it is changing least least very less which two months so what are the months here if you see from april and may so you, you can see here from april and may okay the change here is least there is no change actually we can say there is no increase there is no decrease the change here is completely zero so it has been uh, no change here same values are there for april and may i hope you understood this one yeah april and may. next question Approximately what was the average electric uh, energy cost per month in the first half of the year? First half of the year average. Take some time. Note down all the values. Now we have to worry about the values. Okay. Average, ratio, uh, percentage, anything in this way the question is there. Then uh, you have to worry about the points. What are the uh, values that is corresponding to that month exactly that we will see. The table is on, uh, graph is on screen and I'll repeat the question once again. Please make a note. Approximately what average electric energy cost per month in the first half of the year? Average of first half of the year electric energy cost. That is the dotted line uh, of this gray line. <clears throat> Some of the observations divided by number of observations will give you the answer for this the average concept if you finish doing put your answer in the chat box Yes, this will be the last question of the day today. Rest of the questions, the handout will be given to you for practice. Uh, bar graph, pie chart. So there are no, uh, no there are uh, the questions which are not that much difficult you can do. The only thing is you should know the concept of percentages, ratios, and the change actually, how the percentage change is there. And analyzing the figure is very important. So rest of the questions, you can do it as your practice work. So this will be the last question of the day. Approximately what was the average electric energy cost per month in the first half of the year? First half of the year. Again, the graph is on the screen. Any answers, guys? Yes. $50, $60, $45. Okay. Okay, more two options are left. Anybody please put the two options also so that I can explain very clearly. Okay. Right. <clears throat> average. You need to take the average, right? So average of first half. What are the values? Average of first half. Uh, first half in the sense, what are the months actually? January to June. January to June, right? From Jan to June, uh, values we have to consider and we have to uh, take an average. So I'll just write down the values here. Uh, for January, it will be 70. For Jan, for Feb, it will be 65, uh, right? So it will be 65 for Feb. 70 so it is 70 65 here and again for march march uh, approximately it is uh, uh, 55 again for april april approximately 40 so a unit here you can consider one unit as one centimeter uh, like uh, 10 po points i think you understand right 
so if it is 40 and 10 put small small dots if you are unable to get it exactly so 10 dots so that you can uh, clear it so 40 and 60 the difference is 20 so you you take approximate value uh, which is suitable for that now i uh, have put 70 65 55 and again april april uh, 47 i think april april value here so uh, nearly it is less than half so it will be 45 so 45 okay next plus april finish may uh, 45 and 47 whatever it may be uh, again may january feb march april may and june okay june will be 70 uh, okay, June 70, May missing. May, what is May here? May is approximately 45. Uh, so there is no change in May and June, right? So 45, I'm just taking 45. Plus. Yes. Plus 45 plus 70 divided by. Uh, what are what, how many values we are taking? One, two, three, four, five, six values divided by six. So final answer in the chat box quickly. Approximately sixty dollars. Yes, the answer is sixty dollars approximately. Answer for this will be sixty dollars. Try to solve the rest of the questions also. Okay. So this was the last question today. See you in the next class. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, ma'am. Also, ma the handouts will be uploaded by tomorrow afternoon. Sorry for the inconvenience. And in case you have any doubts, you can ask it uh, ask right now. Otherwise, you all may please leave the class. Thank you. Uh, Himani, I will get back to you. Otherwise, I will request, um, ma'am, uh, ma'am Abida, please, if you could look into uh, uh, Himani's query and can suggest some uh, geometry basic resources. And we'll get back to you okay, in sir. tomorrow's class. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye.